Previously on Gus the Struggle Boys. to start actually installing those tongue and groove panels, which is really exciting. What our method is gonna be or what we're gonna start with trying, what we are gonna do is we're gonna use some wood glue and some finishing nails. We have a nail gun, so we're hoping that the combination of this wood glue being really strong and putting some of this on every single finishing board, you know, letting it sit for a while and, and really dry and get that good bond. And then uh, a couple of finishing nails on each one, as well as the tongue and groove sticking together and holding each other up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find the center of the ceiling and we're gonna put one row all the way down. That will show us how many boards we'll need to get the length of the actual ceiling and if how many we need to cut or where we need to cut them. And then we've also seen from doing our own research, watching other people install them, that they suggest doing them from front to back rather than side to side, because especially if you're doing alternating boards, which we wanna do, which just means they're not all gonna line up perfectly. Because if you get some alternating boards and you have a board that you have to slide one in between, it's very difficult, especially in that small enclosed space. So they suggest working uh, back to front or front to back, whichever direction you want to go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the center. screw holes from the ceiling that are still there there's a bigger one right in the center which I'm not sure if that is them marking the center if they used a different screw that was bigger in the center but it looks like there's a bigger hole all the way down which marks the middle now of course it's not perfect you know some of them are just a little off but we think that we're going to use those as a marker because they're all turning out to be around the same spot. One of the other things we're gonna be doing while we're installing our ceiling is installing our lights. You guys saw that we got these little LED lights when we tested them out and stuff. They're very small, but they're very bright. So we put all of our connectors on them. We already had our connectors on the ceiling. So while we're installing these, we're gonna to need to be drilling the holes for these to go into. In the instructions, these required, it said at least a 2.4 inch hole for them to fit into. We don't know of any 2.4 size of those circle saw bits but we have we already had a two and a half size one and that should work perfectly for this so you'll see how they work when we install them but they have these little clips that you fold up slide it in and then they pop open holding them in we tested our finishing nails to make sure that they're not too long and measured the pressure of the gun so they don't go too far in or stick out and now he's testing the circle bit on a board to make sure it doesn't break or you know, make it more difficult to use the board. Right now, not all the boards that we have since we're doing it in the middle are going to be full boards. So we are putting them up here and seeing where we need to cut them off. So right here, it'll cut off about five to six inches. And then we're gonna go ahead and mark right here where the center of the board would be uh, relatively to everything else. So we can go ahead and drill that hole out for that light.
just hold the other ones. <laughs> Looks amazing. So this is very much a two person job, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult to film. Um, if we're doing a smaller piece or once we get a good groove going, I'll try to get some better up close shots and talk to you about our process that we're using, everything we're making sure that we're doing and the system we have found that works. But for now, you're just gonna kinda have to watch us struggle from afar. It's also, which we knew this, we just kinda forgot. It's gonna involve a little bit more scraping because every once in a while we'll run into a cluster of insulation that might get in the way or that we didn't wanna do just yet because it has wires or something. This is day five. Um, we have done a good section of the center, but we are nowhere near to finishing. We wanted to get a system down, um, but it's kind of been like everything else. Each board is a little bit different than the last, so not the same system doesn't always work. And we kind of have, hopefully, the most difficult parts over working around the hatches and the fan. We're having to cut around them or in them in specific spots and cut a whole lot of them. So let me show you what we have done. We have a good center row done all the way down. And these are the areas that kind of give us the most trouble working around the fans. So the system that we have come up with is we measure the board out to where we want to cut it and we're trying to get all of them to start and end on some of these boards so they have something to attach to so none of the ends can bow down or anything. The fact that they fit into the tongue and groove next to the board to the board next to them helps also hold it up but just to give it as much support as possible we want to have them start and end on those boards. So first we'll pick our measurement of where we want it to finish and make a mark and then we'll cut it. We brought our miter saw so we have nice straight cut lines. And then we will hold it up and we will mark where it hits on these furring strips. Then we will hold it up while one of us puts glue on each section, the wood glue on each section where it's going to come in contact with that. Then we hold it up and we have to hammer it into place. The tongue and groove doesn't just slide right into each other or fit in easily, of course. So we have to hammer it into place. We usually use a board like this or something to hold against it and then hammer against that. If you just hammer right against the ceiling board, it cracks the end of it or bends it and things like that makes it more difficult for the next board to go in. Some of them, it's hard to explain and it's also hard to video because because we're both doing stuff, but some of them will have to start at the end and rather than rather than putting it here and hammering it in, we'll have to put it 
down here and then slide it into place because it won't go into it from the side. It has to go onto it from the end, if that makes any sense. So that tactic has worked for a couple of them. That one isn't ideal because the glue pretty much just wipes off as it's being uh, hammered in that way. But after we do get it into place, then we nail it with the nail gun. And we're trying to put two nails on each furring strip on where it touches uh, each part of the board. So yeah, so then it will have enough points of contact to hold it still. So it's been a little bit difficult. It's very tedious and it's taking a very long time, but we are absolutely loving the way that it's turning out. So we're gonna keep going, try to knock out as many as we can. And I'll try to show you some more detailed of the process. So there's a couple of tips that we want to share with you. Uh, the first one that we're going to go over right now is making sure that once you put your piece in, that there's going to be enough room for you to be able to put the next piece in. Whenever we get to this section, we have to be aware that this right here falls down a little bit. So if we were to nail the actual nails all the way in with as much pressure as we could, this basically this tongue right here would be touching this piece of metal right here. So that would give it no space for the groove to go into. So what we're doing is we're just getting this small piece of wood that we have left over from one of our projects and we are making it space. When we nail it, we don't nail it with pressure. We just nail it enough so we can go into both pieces of wood. And then afterwards, we can go ahead and finish putting the pieces in while still keeping the, the tongue exposed for the next groove to go into it. So that's what we've done all throughout here, mostly because this piece of metal falls down and bends down a little bit more than the actual um, posts that go right here, whatever those are called. Channels, Channels yeah. just did we hung those hammock hooks in one of our recent videos and a few other people have done that in their bus and I don't love the way that it looks when you can see the whole thing and that's just me being picky they look you know they don't look ugly but you can see a lot of it and the whole thing being screwed into the ceiling so we decided to mount them beforehand and then just have the actual loop stick out and that's how we went about that the only one that was super difficult, not even, the only one that was a little bit difficult was the one that was in the center of a board. So it didn't involve cutting a section out on just the end. That one was right in the center, but we just tilted it out and let the groove uh, slip into it that way. And it was a little tricky, but it did work out. And this is just for taste. You know, it's just as easy to attach it um, Afterwards, you just have to have long enough screws to put them in and strong enough screws. But that's what we decided to do. And we really like the way that it turned out because it's a lot cleaner, in my opinion, and just having the loop uh, stick out. Another thing that we did was not nail the pieces all the way down so we can make sure that we would have um, enough room for us to be able to put the other pieces. Now that we have gotten this space out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and start making sure that we hammer all the other nails in all the way.
So if you did your furring strips the way that we did, where you put them on the sides of the channels, and it has to be separate pieces because of the curve, you might run into this issue. The ends of the boards, so when two ends of boards meet together, either the tongue of the grooves might not quite match up perfectly because your furring strips might not be perfectly even. So what we do whenever we notice that it's not matching up perfectly is we won't nail the ends of those boards in all the way or even at all until we get to the next board. So that way we can move them around a little bit more and match them up. So the next board will go in a little bit easier. And then once that next board goes in and lines them up, then we'll nail them in. If you did it on top or if it's one solid board, or if your boards are going the other way instead of the way that we did them, it might be a little bit easier. But that is something that we have run into and that is a little trick that has helped us a lot. So we are kind of, sort of, officially two thirds done with the ceiling. We have this side done as much as we're gonna be able to do right now. We are still waiting on a few wires to come in to finish hooking up a couple of things. Um, they're coming from Amazon and they're just taking a little bit longer. So we're gonna have to leave this section open to be able to fit the those last wires in and fall behind the wall like all the other ones are. We could do one more row, but in order to get that last row in, the second to last row has to tilt out so it wouldn't be able to be attached. So it'll just make it easier if we leave those two. So we are going to move on to the other side and do just as many rows that we did over here on this side, leaving that last bottom section open for any wires that we need to finish up. And then it will be hopefully easy to just go in and put in those last two rows and finish it up. And then this uh, bottom section right here will just be covered up with a little bit of trim or something, just making it all look really nice. Having some sort of mallet, a mallet has worked better for us than a hammer. It's less of like a blunt section on the wood so it doesn't break it as much. Also, this wouldn't really work for us because they're so thin. But if you had some of the thicker ones, you could put a board standing up and down on the other end or in the middle to help hold the board up while you're working with it. Other than that, it's just a really repetitive process. Each board is a little bit different than the last, just fitting it into the groove however it has bowed or dried differently than the others. And then sometimes when those two ends don't meet up perfectly, that's a little tricky section. But um, it's just step by step, very tedious, and we're gonna start finishing the other side. So we got most of our boards in. Like we said, we're gonna leave these two spots on the side for a few more wires that we need to get in for the cameras that we're just waiting to come in. But we got most of it done. And we're really, really happy with the way that it turns out. It was not near as easy as we thought it was gonna be. The whole tongue and groove just fitting together. Oh, you took what, two weeks straight of us working on it? Like straight, like day yeah. after day. And it took a very long time, so just be prepared for that. Um, but we, we love the way it looks. We don't have any more hanging wires, which that's We have plus. no wires catching in our hair to make us mad. We got all our lights in and we're gonna be able to test them. We got our hooks in. We we faded the color to where we put more of the lighter boards up front and then kind of moved on to the darker boards in the back because they're gonna be um, in the closets and things like that. But we, we really, really are happy with the way that it turned out. Yeah. For some reason, this side went in a little bit easier than this side. And we think it's because this side we were going into the tongue and this side we we're going into the groove. So whenever that happens, uh, the actual groove itself can kind of either break or become shut or just not be very easy to work with. So we used a leftover piece of uh, ceiling that we had. And what we would do instead of hammering with a just a piece of board against it so it wouldn't break is so we would stick it in there and we would hammer the piece of wood that we uh, were cheating with so we would we would use a leftover piece we'd stick it into the groove with the tongue inside 
and they would hammer it in that way and that helps us a lot with that being said thank you guys so much for watching we hope that you enjoy you enjoyed the video find it entertaining or educational uh, if you did like the video please make sure to give it a big thumbs up go comment down below what you liked or what you didn't like about it some tips that you found super helpful you can make sure to follow uh, us on our social medias you can find us at gus.gps on instagram to see more behind the scenes stuff and steps along the way that we do if you are subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. If you're not, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you like videos like this, you might like videos that we make as well. And if you don't like this video, then you might like another video. You never know. There you go. So make sure you hit that notification bell so then you can get notified every time we post a video. And as always, don't forget to enjoy your life. Stay positive. And keep going places. Suckers!